Hello and welcome to today's video tutorial. My name is Qasim Al Rafi. I am the customer support specialist here at the iTrack 365 team. During today's tutorial, we will be going over how to submit process flows from draft to closed with a couple disclaimers. Firstly, if you hear me use the word process flows or forms, these are interchangeable. They basically mean the same thing. Uh, we're just moving away from the forms verbiage. Secondly, I will be using the Google Chrome browser. So if you do notice that you know, you're using Internet Edge or Microsoft Explorer um, and a little bit, a little bit of UI changes, these are all purely visual. The portal works the same way. And finally, the incident report that I'm doing might not look the same as the incident report that you have as it purely is company based, right? Now, without further ado, the first thing you want to do is open up your browser of choice. I'll be using Google Chrome. On this address bar up here, you're going to insert the link to your portal. It's going to look something like either itrack.ca slash your company name if you're an on-prem client, or it would look like you know your company name dot azurewebsites.net. So for today's demonstration, we'll be using the on-prem environment. Log into your username and password. Now your username might be, you know, first.last at companyname.com. If you don't know what your email or password is, please message your iTrack administrator. Clicking login, you'll be greeted with this uh, activities landing page. Now I'll be making another video regarding general portal navigation. Uh, so we'll go over a little bit of it today, but for the most part, we're just demonstrating on how to close a form. So from there, as you notice here on the left hand side, these are all called tabs. Every time it highlights in white, that means you can actually select it. So I'll select this little forms tab here. And depending on how many forms you have or how fast your Wi-Fi is, it takes a certain amount to load. Right now we see all these little drag downs here, right? We call these process flow groups. So anything that regards to safety and health will be in the safety and health group. Whereas if it regards to sustainability, it's in there. So if you don't know where uh, the process flow you want to submit is, and you, should, uh, you know, you're too lazy to click through all of them, click the expand button and you see here that every process flow actually fully expands. Collapse it to close them all. So for today's example, We'll be going over the incidents in which we will be doing a injury classification. If you do not select the classification, you'll get an error pop up saying you must select one. Just keep that in mind. And some of these do not have classifications. As you can see, that I clicked the safety meeting process flow and it automatically opened up. Okay. So incidents, injury, new form, and a new tab opens up. Cool. So just a little things about the UI here. On the left hand side, we have the process flow statuses. Um, you know, we have these blue headers are called sections. These black headers are called um, form type fields or process type fields. And then we have the actual data being inputted into them. You have the ability to submit the form and you have the ability to save the form. Now, if I submit the form here, Either two things will happen. Recurrently, there's not too much data into it, so either it'll submit correctly, right? You're getting the thing form submitted. He has been submitted and assigned the number 285. And it's actually been pushed to review, right? The second thing that happens, for example, if I click the near miss form type, if you submit the form, you see here that some of the fields are actually required. So the one, the incident report form type did not have any required fields whereas the near missed form type does. So you see here that these red asterisks here symbolize which fields are required. So something to keep in mind, All right? So incident, injury, form. And finally, the ability to save. I highly suggest saving whenever you start a, uh, a process flow as some of the fields will be locked behind, um, locked behind a barrier if you don't save it. And I'll show you a demonstration of that. So we see here that we know that this form was properly saved as it was assigned a number. Where here it was not saved, it's still called new. 
even though they're both in draft. If we scroll down in the new one, we see the injury information is locked, and to enable the content, we have to save the record. Whereas we scroll to the form we saved and we see the injury information, we're able to add information into it. So as best practice, I like to save the form um, before you start. The other reason to save would be if you have you know, a long incident form and it takes forever to fill out, you want to make sure your information is properly being uh, stored and saved. Cool. So as I mentioned, we see here that the form type field of date time reported has actually been grayed out. So we don't have the ability to change it like we do date time occurred. Now what this means, it means it's only a read only uh, field and we can't change this whatsoever. Whereas here for the date time occurred, if you want to change the date it occurred, we click this little calendar icon, click, we see it happened on Monday, May 4th, clicking the clock icon, we can say it happened at 1 p.m. All right. Now, reported by and notified by are called employee fields. One of them will usually default to who you're logged into, but you can change it by clicking. You see how it highlights blue? By either searching for your name or by showing all or by searching per business unit. So I can say only want Calgary and I only want, you know, uh, dispatchers, for example. There's no dispatchers in Calgary, so let's look for accountants. We see that 2016 uh, September test, Tracy Gales and Patricia are all there. Now, if we can't find yourself, but you know you're actually in the system, you can press clear, open it again, and you see that the filters have been reset. Search for your name. And you see here, support new systems. Okay. So same idea with business unit. You can either search, you can show all, or you can filter. You see that even though I searched for Calgary and it's the last version, it's still smart enough to recognize where it is. Or if I search just ALB, it says Alberta. So it's not, it doesn't wrap around the entire text. And then notified, I'm going to say I notified myself because I cut myself in this demonstration. So as a description, you have two, uh, it's just a long text paragraph field. So we're going to say support uh, Neo systems, cut himself while working in the kitchen. The knife was not sharpened and he had oil on his hands, right? Now, if you're typing a long, long paragraph, you notice that what you already started is actually gone. And this little scroll bar appears. By clicking this little gray button, you notice that the cursor changes. I'm able to scroll down and more lines will appear. Media actions taken, support, Neo systems. Put on a band aid. Right. And then under these fields, you have a little comment. So you, your company will, you know, suggest what you fill out. You know, descriptions of actions, all persons involved, description of the incident itself, and probable causes. For today's demonstration, I won't go that advanced, and I'm writing the small demonstration, small description. Next is the risk matrix. And you know you're working on a field when it highlights in blue, select it. And what this does is it's a little bit of a calculation, right? So we're looking at it and we're saying, okay, you know, support cut his finger. How much did that affect assets? Honestly, it was negligible, right? Did it affect the community? Nah, company, maybe people around him got worried. How is the environmental impact? Uh, nothing, so I'm not going to choose any of them. Or, and how did it affect the people? You know, I had to put a bandaid on my finger, a bit of first aid. What's the probability of this happening? Honestly, it's pretty probable. It can happen again. I'm in the kitchen a lot cutting. Press OK. And you see here that it's given you a low, low risk with a reasonable probable with a skill of four. All right. Open it again, but this is a, you know, a severe oil tanker crashed. You know, it costed more than 30 days equipment. It was prolonged international, severe long term, and someone actually passed away. But it's extremely remote. You see here that it was a catastrophic event, but it's not going to happen again. Or if it's possible, it happens again. The max you're going to do 
is a 16. You notice the color changes depending on the risk. All right, so for today's demonstration, I'm just going to go over negligible, localized, first aid, probable. Cool. Next is this yes and no field. We're saying, is this a first party incident? We're going to say yes. If we said no, a new field actually opens up. So you have to do keep in mind on the fields you're selecting as some new fields may appear. And if this was required, but you scrolled past it, you might not be able to submit your form. There's a first party incident. Is it confidential? Not really. It just depends on who it gets sent to. You know, is it an on-site location? We're going to say yes, right? If we say no, we can choose the offsite location. If we say yes, you know, we're saying it happened. Um, let's say it happened in the office. And it happened, I guess, office again. So both, both sides of the office. Next is this information, in, uh, injury information. We call this injured person's control. By clicking the plus sign of the text, we're able to add who was injured during this um, event. So name of this, we're going to say support, new systems. You know, it was a little first aid incident. His finger was cut. Injured side was the right finger. He cut himself, right? Click save and close. You'll know if you did this correctly, if it actually opens up the grid, right? So you see here that we did not submit any attachments and the grid is still empty where we submitted an injured person and the grid opened up. So the second thing you can do with this is you can actually add non-employees. So let's say for an example, uh, you know, a, a customer is walking by as I cut my finger and some blood went on him, for example. I can say, you know, customer number one was his name. Just a little first aid. You know, you know, hit his, uh, it lands on his wrist, for example, his right wrist, and it's just a chemical, just passing of blood, right? By clicking save and close, we see here that the same amount of information went through. Now, let's say you made a mistake and I didn't cut my finger, I cut my hand. You just click on the name again, and then by going here, you can change it to hand, and it updates on this side, All right? So. You have the ability to edit it. Nothing's ever set in stone. Next is the attachments control. By clicking attachment, you have basically three things you can do. By typing in subject, right, subject number one, you click this little select files button and a browser pop-up opens. I'm going to submit this data as if it was a picture of my finger. Now, if you click just X or you back out of it, nothing will upload. You actually have to press this upload button here. We did it correctly because we see that I updated the grid. Clicking attachment again, and you can say we don't add a subject even though it's required. And we select the file data again, and we upload it. We see that the subject became the file type name. The last way to do this is by selecting an attachment, clicking, uh, sorry, opening up your file explorer. We see here the same data file is here, and we can drag it into the attachments control and now we see that's that that's there so three ways you can do it and you can always not mistaken upload multiple attachments right by clicking by control clicking and clicking all of them opening it you see here that all the attachments are being uploaded click upload depending on how long your data is gonna how, long, how fast your internet speeds are, it'll take a bit longer. You see here that, okay, everything was uploaded. Perfect. And then for the administration section, we have here that, okay, so the draft was created by New System Support on this time. Just a good way to see what's happened to the form exactly. If you want to add any notes, you can add a note by saying, texting into the, the type, uh, the text field here. If you don't click this plus note button, it doesn't get updated. So you have to make sure that you do click the note button for it to be added and saved. Okay, everything looks good here. We're going to click the submit the form to move it to the preview status.
Now you know you submitted it correctly if the tab actually closes. So to go back to the form you're submitting, we're going to press this view button. And we see that number 2886, which is one we created, is now in form status preview and it was assigned to the lead operator. Depending on the way your company sets it up, it's probably being sent to your supervisor and then escalated to manager if need be. So by clicking on the form, you see the cursor changes to a little hand. We go here and open it up again, and now it's in draft preview. Now, some of the times when you're going through this, nothing actually changes. So during this preview uh, status, all it's telling you is the lead operator to just go through it, make sure everything was filled out correctly. If something wasn't filled out correctly, you can go back to draft, or you can cancel it if you don't think it was relevant save it and go leave and do what you have to do or move it to the next step. But we see here that it took took us 10 minutes to fill out the incident form. Here are some notes and an email was actually sent to the lead operator to myself. I'm the lead operator now with a little incident saying review the form and all its information. Right. So this is make sure that all the emails are being sent properly to make sure that everyone is getting the information passed on correctly. So we're going to move this to analysis now because everything looks fine. Right, we see here it was successfully moved. Right, we're going to open it up one more time. Now we're in the analysis section. We're going through it. Everything looks the same. And there, this new investigation and analysis section opened up. So depending on what status you're in, new sections will appear as well. So we're going to say, okay, external notified parties and witness. This is called a person control. And you have two ways of doing this. We can say that, you know, support, well, excuse my, my name. So Kasim Al-Rafi was uh, a witness to this. He was, his role in this was just a witness. You know, his email is that, that's his phone number. And the comments are, you know, he witnessed the event close. You see here successfully updated when the grid updates as well. By selecting it again, and let's say this is someone who is referenced quite often, you can click this little contact button. Right, pop-up opens up. You're able to show all contacts from every account. Now, if you're only working at, for example, ABC Energy, you see that, you know, maybe Mary Ellis, you know, she was a property manager at that time. Her comments, so she also witnessed it. All right, obviously be a lot more descriptive. This is just a test, test demonstration. All right, so the reason you want to go here instead of uh, typing everything out is it just saves you a bit of time instead of filling out her email and phone number. Okay, save and close. And as always, if you made a mistake, Always click the person's name and change what you need to change. All right, or delete if you need to delete it. Next is cause analysis. This just lets us get to the root cause of the incident. We're saying, you know what, this is a safety incident type of event. We're saying that this is an equipment failure. You know, uh, supports knife was rusty. Right, and dull. That's how he cut himself. Click save and close. We see here that it was properly submitted. So by all you have to do is click the edit button to add type of events, to add an immediate direct cause. We're saying, you know, he's using defective equipment. Um, yeah, and we go there and let's try to save and close. We notice that the save failed. This little red asterisk attached to everything we select means that every text box you, add, you open has to have data inside of it. <laughs> He was using a dull knife. Save and close. We're able to save and close it. Next is the basic root causes. We're able to say it was it engineering, not really. Was it purchasing, not really. It was more so maintenance. We're saying, you know what? Uh, they did not properly clean and sharpen their knife. All right. Obviously, there's a lot to go through here. This is a simple demonstration but it goes into physical stress, mental stress, lack of skill, so on and so forth. Save and close. And finally, areas for corrective action. You know, we're saying 
let's say it's a plan general inspection, so clean and sharpen knife, and then managers should inspect knife on a daily basis, right? So everything you add, you have to basically just um, fill out as intended. So obviously, if we're choosing contractor selection, we wouldn't say employee um, use the knife wrong because those aren't related. So it should relate to what you're writing. Get rid of that. Click save and close. And then we're saying, okay, click this little X button here. And then we see that we added two areas for corrective action. We added one basic root cause, one direct cause, one type of event. If what you've... Uh, if what you've submitted does not show that something went wrong, I suggest looking into it and doing it again. And then any comments need to be said. You go down, you see your attachments are there, and the second corrective actions uh, section opens up as well. So we're going to open up this little form task button, and we're going to call it, this is how you assign an employee a task or an action. So we're going to say support, sharpen your knife, before you use it, right? A sharp knife is actually safer than a dull knife as it stops quickly and cleanly cuts through whatever you need, forcing or lowering the risk of diversion off the save. Right. Now you're assigning it to you know, some support and you're saying, you know what, it's actually due tomorrow when you come into the office tomorrow. This is a high priority, we're requesting it. And I'll save it for now. You see after you save it, this attachments button actually opens up and we can att add attachments if we need to. And then you can also relate it to the cause item. So as you see here, I'll quickly close this. In this areas for corrective action, we see a follow-up system and a plan general inspection, right? So if we go back and we go back to the corrective action, and we edit the one we just made, we can say that this corrective action is actually related to a follow-up system. So we're telling him what to do and make sure he actually does it. Then by saving and closing it, see everything is good the grid updated you know it took this guy one minute to pre review it eh, you could have taken longer if it was a 10 minute form you go down the notes are there and the emails were sent out properly cool so we're gonna click next so, so the, and this next button the submit move to analysis they're all the same thing they all submit with all just different names cool from there we see it's now in the approval section by clicking 2886 once more, it's probably been sent to the HSE manager. They can go through it, you know, the things that were changed. Okay, the cause analysis makes sense. We have the witnesses, cool. You know, here's the corrective action, that looks good. Yeah, I approve of this, you know. Just going through and just uh, make sure everything was filled out correctly. Obviously, if you're an HSE manager, you should not take less than a minute to do that, but demonstration requires demonstration. Now the next status is actually an interesting status. It's called the implement action status. So by clicking 2886, once more, we see here that on the left side, we do not have a submit button. We only have a save button. That's because this implement action status is actually linked to the corrective action. So we see here that the status is still requested. Therefore, as long as this stays requested, this will stay in implement actions. So. I'll explain to you as a user how to complete a requested action. So we're going to go back to the activities landing page we first came on. You might not have all of these. They might be called a different thing. Um, for the most part, you'll only have the tasks that are assigned to you. Maybe some job procedures if you have that as well. So we see here that this action plan register is where the form tasks are being saved. We know that the form number is 2886. So I'm going to go here, click in this little funnel. I'm going to filter by 2886. We see here that support, sharpen your knife before you use it, requested is the same one here. So by clicking this little subject, 
hyperlink, a pop-up opens up. We go down, saying, you know what? I completed this today, actually. And put the status as completed. I sharpened my knife. And if you want to add an attachment, you can. And you can save and close. Which gets rid of the action plan register. And if I refresh this page after, because the status is still being read as requested, we see here that it was pushed to pending review. So we go down another review section. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. The emails were sent out. Okay, he completed his action. We're going to click next, go to the next status. Cool, goes back in. Like I said, you know what was successfully submitted. If the tab closes, we go back to forms here. From there, we go to back to the view button. You see here 2886, so that's final review. And there's no new sections, everything looks good. You know, it took him some time to review. Cool, final review, let's move it to closed. And we can finally finish off this incident report. Cool. Now, we see here that 2886 is now actually no longer available in the active form section. By clicking this little drag down, and we go to inactive forms, we can see that 2886 is now a closed form. And if we open it once again, we actually cannot change any of the fields we actually added. So we see here that they're all now either bolded, right, for the fields that have data into them. And there's no way to edit any of these. You can still see your attachments if you have ownership of the form. But for the most part, everything is set in stone. OK, so from there, all the emails are sent out. We're good to go. Now, a couple more things you can do alongside the closed forms. You can actually, let's say you want to go click the little filter button here, support Neo systems, and you want to see, OK, how many forms have they completed? By clicking this export to Excel button, you can actually save an Excel file and you can do some data analysis if you'd like. Secondly, if you go back into the form, you have the option to print it, email it, send it as a PDF. And then if you want to go back to adding a form, you just click this little add button here. And then finally, while this loads, it's just going to take a while to load. Um, that was the entire tutorial. I hope it helped. The last thing I suggest you do is, as always, log out. So let's say you logged out and you go back into the form and you it'll give you a pop-up saying, hey, you're not no longer logged in, please log back in. Something to keep in mind. And let's say you left for 10 minutes and you come back, you might see this issue as well, depending on how long the timeout is. Um, I'm not, I don't think it's 10 minutes, I think it's a bit longer than 10 minutes, but there is a timeout period to make sure security is uh, set properly. Cool. So thank you for watching this video tutorial. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on LinkedIn. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to message us on LinkedIn or message us on the YouTube comment section. Or if it's a bit more advanced uh, uh, question, feel free to message support at neosystems.com. If you guys do have any questions or want to try iTrack yourself, feel free to search us up on App Source or, like I said, email support at neosystems.com and we can send you a demo. Thank you and have a great day.